BBC Radio 1 and 1 Extra's news beat. Election debate. Immigration, the NHS and education. Welcome to the second Radio 1 Newspeak election debate. Another chance for you to talk over the issues that you say are important to you as you decide what to do with that vote on May the 7th. Tonight, we're joined by around 100 young voters here in the Great Hall at the University of Birmingham. <laughs> for the next hour, we'll be talking about some of the big topics important to them, immigration, health and Education. Now, whether you're listening to us on Radio 1 and 1 Extra, watching us live on the BBC News Channel or catching up later on BBC 2, remember the conversation is going on online as well. And the hashtag is Newsbeat. Now, as well as our live audience here in Birmingham, we have representatives from some of the main political parties who are after your vote in a couple of weeks' time. For Labour, Emma Reynolds is the Shadow Housing Minister. Norman Lamb is here to represent the Lib Dems. He was a health minister in the coalition government. Paul Upple is here to speak for the Conservatives. Stephen Wolfe is the UKIP spokesperson on immigration. And Amelia Womack is the deputy leader of the Green Party. So let's start with an easy one. Should we be worried about immigration? Uh, personally, I feel it's not a major issue, but it is an issue within our society. We need to, you know, keep an, an eye on immigration because we're getting, I feel, there are positive immigrants and there's also negative immigrants. There's the negative is the ones that are willing to work the benefit system without having to work a day in their life. They're quite happy to sit back and uh, claim work, work in people's taxes. And Daniel, we should say that you're an apprentice, right? Yeah, that's right. My name is Blessed, I'm 22. I don't think uh, immigration is an issue. I'm an immigrant myself from Zimbabwe. When I was 16, I had my own cleaning company and I was employing six cleaning staff. So, Daniel, what would you say uh, about people that come uh, this to This is what I'm saying. Uh, positive and negative. A massive positive here. You know, the guy's come to our country and he's set up uh, his own business. He's created jobs for other people as well. You know, these are the people that we need to be saying, you know, come to our country and do well, but not come to our country and not bring a trade or not bring something with you that's going to benefit your local community and also the British economy. What do you say, Blessing? I agree with that statement. I think uh, immigration needs to be managed, looking at what, what does the country need in terms of skills and then bringing that in. And, is, and there's a lot of negative stories around immigration, but I think there's a lot of positive as well, which um, the media need to focus on. All right. well, before we go well, let's find out, shall we? Hi, my name's Eve. I'm a student nurse here at the University of Birmingham. I'm working in the NHS most of my time at the moment and we hear this rhetoric from UKIP about people coming over here with HIV, for example, using our services. Actually, if you spend some time on any hospital ward in this country, you will see that it is not immigrants in the beds, it's immigrants staffing the yeah, wards yeah. and it's the immigrants who are looking after our dead and are, are dying and are ill and what we are doing is we are going and getting them from other countries because we don't have yeah. enough nurses. We're poaching them, we let other countries train them, and we bring them over here, and then we let them work a 12-hour shift, go home, and hear this disgusting rhetoric from parties like UKIP about the fact that we don't want them here, they should go home. After that. we've brought them here, and we are working their fingers to the bone in our NHS, looking after people who are dying. Well, you've got someone from UK. <laughs> people who are dying, Stephen Wolfe, being blamed. Was what Nigel Farage said disgusting? No, because he wasn't talking about uh, the people who were actually sick themselves. He was using that as an example in relation to the International Health Service for the National well, Health Service. Well, he spoke very, very but specifically about yeah, the number of can, people I, living with HIV. If I can deal with a very important point that you've seen here already, take a look at this audience, which mirrors my background, being someone of mixed race, black American grandfather, you know, white gran grandmother, Jewish grandmother, Irish ca Catholic grandmother. 
And what you've got in this country now is a, a melting pot of a thousand voices who've actually contributed to this society. And a key point, that, l listening to that, and what's wrong with our debate, and why I've tried to change it dramatically through UKIP in the way that we look at our policies, is to make a clear distinction between the phrase immigration and that of immigrants. None of our party has ever suggested we don't like immigrants or don't want immigrants. None of us have ever said that we don't want immigration. What we want to do is create an ethical immigration policy that actually enables people from all over the world to be treated equally. And what my challenge is to the other political parties is, is can you follow my ethical policy which says, I don't care whether you're a German doctor or an Indian doctor. As long as you have the language skills, the qualifications, I want you to be able to come here on a points-based system because at the moment there is discrimination between Europeans and non-Europeans. Why is it that my black American grandfather would have to have a visa, but my, English, uh, sorry, my Irish grandmother would have to come over? That's not equal, that's not fair, and that's what I'm trying to drive through the immigration policy for UKIP. Norman Lamb. But UKIP, UKIP last year had a massive poster up during the European elections, which basically said, they're after your job. And what is that if it's not stoking up, uh, you know, anger and, uh, and irritation? Well, it didn't say that phrase, no, though, did it? That no, was your it interpretation. It, no, that was what the poster said. Uh, and there are loads and loads of nurses in the NHS, of care workers in the care system, who are doing the most incredibly important work. And how do they feel when they go home and they see posters like that? Well, I'm, I'm saying... <laughs> well, what I am saying, Norman, is absolutely very clear about what we're saying in the policy. You know, we, our policies are absolutely clear, and we've always said that. What we're trying to do is trying to make the, take the heat, actually, and certainly what I'm trying to do, is take the heat But I don't think all of your colleagues from, do that. Actually, I think you'll be surprised how many there are. You talk of Jim, but, Ca but Jim when, Carver... But, but when Nigel Farage talks about feeling nervous about living next door to Romanians, what does that do to get good race relations? OK, let's have, another question. let's have another question here okay. from our audience in Birmingham. Yeah, sorry, my name's Jarleth, I'm, I'm 20 years old, um, and basically what I want to say is we can try and say that we can cap immigration at whatever levels we want to. The point is we're never going to be able to try and cap immigration. We need to bet that point there because whilst we're in the EU, the freedom of movement across Europe needs to be remembered here that we can just about go anywhere we want to. I'm not saying that's not a bad thing. I personally think that we should get out of Europe. I don't think it's a very good thing to be in. Um, and personally, I think that in order to, do, to get out of Europe, that's the way we're going to be able to cap immigration to acceptable levels, um, like UKIP and Conservatives and, uh, are saying at the moment. Hi, I'm Ellie, I'm 18, and I'm from Herefordshire. Um, I want to say that Nigel Farage, I believe, did say um, British people that um, he wants to stop the discrimination law in workplaces. Yes. So he said that um, British people would get jobs because they're British and not because they're from other countries, even though they have the same qualifications, they are literally just born in different countries. How is that fair and acceptable just because they are British? <laughs> Two distinct points by Ray's, and I'll come to each of those. First of all, you're quite right in terms of the immigration numbers. I've made this clear. There are five key categories in immigration. There's work, there's asylum, there's students. There are family reunions, which is important. It's very difficult to control people falling in love, and then there's this catch-all. And what I've tried to say is take students out of it. I was the first one to do it. I know David Hansen from the Labour Party then followed it, because I think it's important for our economy. But the only area that you can actually deal with anything in immigration is in relation to work. That's why we have the Australian points-based system. In relation to what Nigel was talking about, it followed on what Gordon Brown had said about British jobs for British workers. It's impossible to do that unless you had small amendments to certain parts of the employment law to allow those employers that might say, here I am in Birmingham, I want to employ someone from Birmingham who lives here. And remember, take a look in this room again. It's not going to be about colour, it's not going to be about race, it's going to be about the locality of where people live and the nationality about that. But he couldn't do it without breaching European Union regulations. It isn't about abolishing all employment regulations. We're only looking, as a lawyer I specifically looked at this, small areas to give them the freedom so they wouldn't have a propensity to be sued if they chose that. But those laws are there to make sure that everyone is treated equally. Oh, I agree. And, that, and, and if you abandon those laws, then people will not be treated mm -hmm. equally, and that is not acceptable. No, but what we're saying here is... 
there are, there, are, there, are, there are people across, like that young man who said he, ha he lost his wa wages from £80 down to £40. I'm campaigning in, across the country and I've seen people who have said, I'm having difficulties getting employment. Why isn't it an opportunity, an offer, that a local employee might say, I want to take it from this small locality? They, you know they can't do so at the moment because under European regulations they have to offer it to everybody in Europe first. All they right. can't choose locally. We could clearly argue it out all night. Let's have someone else from the audience. Yeah, hi, um, my name is Peter and I'm 20 and I'm a trainee teacher from Glasgow. I just want to make a few general points about the rhetoric around immigration and why it's just wrong, mainly from UKIP, but also from the Tories and also from Labour. The thing about um, benefit tourism, only about 1% of welfare in the entire UK is claimed wrongfully. It's a bigger problem about people who don't claim enough benefits. That's a bigger problem. Also, UKIP can go on and on about how they don't care about race and colour and stuff, but the truth is you have councillors who call their constituents ting-tongs because they're Thai. Um, also, senior politicians who say that people should go back to bongo-bongo land. I'm sorry, but you're... We did expel absolute him. rubbish. It's absolute we did nonsense. Him. Also, um, the politicians are just looking for people to blame apart from themselves because it is government policy that is driving all the bad, bad things in this country. Don't, don't nod your I'm head at me. You. I'm agreeing with you. You're, rhetoric, you're blaming immigrants. I'm not blaming Whereas government policy... Can I finish? Someone mentioned, I think it was in your video, there was about housing crisis. There's about one million homes across.